Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Strange New Worlds. So I'll continue my love of Star Trek. The last podcast I did was Prodigy, which I loved. This is what I would want in a new Star Trek show. So right off the bat, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of uh, fun with it. It's got a good blend of nostalgia, good story writing. On the whole, really loved it. I do have some minor uh, squabbles with it. A little more than nitpicks, I think, because I think it lost steam towards the end. So this is a Star Trek show taking place before the original series. Sent it on the main captain, Pike. Who was in Discovery season two, and the original show, the original pilot had Pike as captain. They continued the story and kind of edited the pilot into a Spock storyline with Kirk going to help Pike. It's a classic, uh, really good one. I love it. So, right off the bat, the actors in this show are great. The chemistry is great. The captain, I just like him in everything you see. He's one of those type of actors, and it just feels right. I have issues with Discovery, although I do think it improved, and I really have problems with Picard. I just I don't even want to watch season two, let alone care about a season three. And I'm a Star Trek nerd. I'm the biggest nerd. I love all that stuff. It just, I don't know. Anyway, I think... I got to give CBS or whoever owns this stuff a round of applause because in a way they listened and they listened and put their own stamp on it. Whereas, you know, you have shows that listen to the audience and the feedback and they course correct and it doesn't really work out in the end. I think this pulls it off. I I think they actually um, were able to do something that the fans wanted more than the garbage that or what I consider, you know, just not my Star Trek. And they gave us what we wanted, and in a way, which is quality. Uh, you can't really ask for much in that sense. Quality show, great acting, some of the cinematography, the way they film things, really heightens and elevates Star Trek as a show. Now, Discovery was doing this. Again, Picard, I don't care about that much. But Discovery was doing this to an extent where it feels like a movie in the way its action scenes are going, and more with the ship battles and stuff. But I'll get to that in a second, because I'm not happy with that either, in, in, in the long run. But excellent show. You love Star Trek. This is for you. Original series blended in with the newer Discovery Picard type thing, and it really blends well, and it's what we wanted. So kudos on, on that um, front. And I think if you look, it's um, Akiva Goldsmith, Alex Kurtzman, Jerry Lumet is the creators. Um, I think his name is Anson Mount is the main character. Just um, and to see Rebecca Romain is just a highlight. She just captures everything so well, and the dressing, the colors, it's just what you want to see. And going through all the actors, you know, there's not many that um, you really notice that stand out, but they work so well, and that is an achievement in itself, casting, and how you can get these characters to, you know, interact with each other and pull it off. Because you're redoing Spock, you're redoing Uhura, and, you know, probably all the other characters will come in eventually, and they do little things. And like I said, they balance the nostalgia well, where you're not just over beat over their head with, you know, hey, this is Star Trek, this is the Star Trek you wanted, that that type thing. So, all in all, I really loved it. Um, Star Trek is just a love of mine since I was a kid. I told the story of being young and just deciding that um, I would put a mirror in front of the TV when everybody went to sleep and position it so I can see it from my bed. And I just watched TV all night, and Star Trek always came on, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, the original one. Just the love of it. Growing up, I played a role-playing game. I just immersed myself and just lose myself and just fun, you know, introspective. It's got 
topics and things that relate to us in a futuristic way. You know, thumbs up on so many levels that the show is at least trying to be what I would have wanted as Star Trek. And that's all I can ask for. Some things I'm going to disagree with, and I'll get to that in a second. So the show is really going on all cylinders. They're doing a blend of uh, Pike's um, continuation from Discovery Season 2 and Spock and, you know, how it was introduced. It was done really well. And... I really think it works on a lot of levels, although I think they should have pulled back on some of the stuff because it loses its steam. And when it gets to a certain episode, uh, you know what, what episode is it? I think it's um around episode seven or eight. Yeah, I think it's seven. They start introducing and really playing up this Pike prophecy thing. And granted, it was done well in Discovery and... He finds out his fate, and it becomes a personal challenge for him, and it's done great from the beginning. Um, Just the little touches they put on it, but then they decide to go really deep into it towards the end of the season, and I think that was a mistake. I don't know, you know, if, if, you know, they have, like, psychiatrists or, you know, people on the show, but who look into these things, but you don't want to keep reminding your audience, that this captain that you like, the actor that you like, is going to not be captain anymore. And they hit it home with bringing in, spoilers, at the last episode, uh, Captain Kirk, who's not the captain of the Enterprise, because they do the storyline thing where Pike prevents the future from happening that he saw. And that's the where it culminates. And I think it was a mistake. I didn't appreciate the... Um, length they went to to beat us over the head with it like you should have done this in season three because if you ask me this should be a seven season arc at least outlined and you know you, you do the best you can and you get to where you're going and you get there eventually right this show is starts reminding us how much we're gonna miss pike and i think it was a mistake even if you bring in a kirk who looks you know a good actor to play him didn't feel right and i think that was a mistake other than that the hand-to-hand fighting scenes throughout the show were bad i don't like the you know what maybe bad but i don't like the technique they're using fast cuts but you don't see what's going on and the characters aren't believable now i've seen shows write this ship and course correct this real fast so this could be just a minor nitpick watching the hand-to-hand combat stuff. It just doesn't um, feel elevated. It doesn't feel... uh, But maybe it is a throwback to the old Kirk, right? Maybe I'll see the old double axe handle and wipe the blood from the corner of his lip. Something that I would appreciate in general nostalgia sense. And I don't... You know, I don't think this is a bad thing. It's just like little things that uh, get to me. And then, again, the show is written so good that you don't need all these battles and fights and space battles but they put him in there and the one thing that turned me off i just got totally taken out of the movie of the movie the show and it's silly i know the captain pike uh, says you know phases shoot and the ship starts shooting pew pew lasers and i really don't fucking like it i don't fucking like it Go back. I don't care how impractical. Now, I understand you doing it with the hand faces. I get it. You don't want to do the long blast uh, laser that hits people. And now you just want to do pew, 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 and little bolts of energy fire out. i uh, fine. The new Star Trek Pike Kelvin timeline, whatever the fuck they're calling it, with um, the new Star Trek cast movies started doing it. And I didn't like it in that. And I don't like the way their ships do it. And they carry it over. So now the ships have the pew pew laser burst things that shoot out and I guess the photon torpedo type thing. But when you see the classic Star Trek phasers and they hit other ships and they've got this long beam that hits certain, it just, uh, even Enterprise uh, with Scott Bakula um, showed you the transition and really played it off well where they didn't have the phasers at first. And then when they got the phasers, they realized by overcharging them, they could, do lower, I don't know what it was, like a sustained 
phaser shot. Maybe this show will do that, but I don't like it, and it bothers me. And I don't think there's a um, real good reason why you change things like that. I can understand the hand phases. Fine, you got actors moving around doing things you can't do. The oh, the beam shoots out and strikes the person. You see the whole beam from the gun to the or the phaser to the person. That type of effects are gone. I get it. I do get it. Keep it with the ships. As a matter of fact, you do things in the show or the movie to pay homage to it. So, for instance, you got the pew pew handguns, right? What if they have to get through a door? Why can't they fiddle with the gun or the phaser and have it have the old sustained phaser look and, like, use it as a torch and, like, cut a hole through a door? You can do things like that and still carry over, but I don't think you can do it with the ships. The ship battles need to be classic, you know, photon, quantum torpedoes, depending on the fucking timeline, and phasers that are a long, consistent laser that you can see going from the ship to the target. And I just think you miss out when you do that the other way, where it's little uh, red um, bolts. It doesn't work for me. And it really takes me out of the show. Sorry, just what it is, but maybe I can get used to it. And like I said, this show is quality all over. It's their decision to do it that way. It doesn't work for me, but all in all, they've got some amazing camera shots, ship battles. Uh, the way they're filming it is a little uh, hybrid of, um, like I said, the best of everything. Movie quality TV show. Uh, single episodes that get you in and out. Um, some that have a heavy theme on, you know, um, uh, societal, you know, troubles that we have or impacts on what's going on in the world. Star Trek has always done it well. Uh, Next Generation might have done it the best, right? After it got its uh, legs underneath it, because that started out pretty, sh- you know, shaky. And just looking at it from that perspective, it's just minor nitpicks, maybe. But it really pulls me out, and I don't want to. I don't want to harp on things like this, and I don't want them to bother me. So all in all, I would say this is a great show. I love it. It's got these little things that bother me. You have to lay off the Pike thing. I mean, they were doing it so well, and it sort of impacted the show in a way where it was meaningful, and it felt like this is a man who knows his future. How do you go day by day? You know, and then. Uh, one of the hints or the clues that they did very well in the show about how close is this future is done well where they get an aha moment and he's like realizes, no, this could be sooner than I thought. And it throws him into a loop, you know, makes him, and I get it. It works great. Actors are great. And then they go a little too far with it. And I don't think it was necessary. This is like end of season two, do this. Uh, season three, you get this uh, buildup of, no, holy shit, he thought he had 10 years. I think that's the thing they use at first. Let's just say that's what it is. So he says, okay, I got 10 years before I die. And that's what he's telling his confidants, the people he trusts and loves. And, okay, so, okay, you know what? The show can go for seven years, 10 years, whatever the fuck. And they'll end it with an epic, uh, you know, transition to the Pike we know from the original series and what happens to him. You could circumvent that, and so that was, those hints were in there too, and they used other characters to explore this while they're talking to him, which was fine. Like, you know, the future is what you make it. Um, you know, that type of thing, where you get the um, you, you know, you get the impression that these things could be changed, and then maybe that's an option. Fine, that was perfect. Do it, keep it there, but you know, even if you know you're going to the pike, no, you know, can't change his fate type thing. And I think that's really the only things that bothered me about the show. I mean, really. Discovery, I could probably go on for hours about what about it I don't like. Although, I think I hinted at Discovery is more just not my Star Trek, which is fine. Like, Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, I know people from, I played a Star Trek game, which they're fucking up big time. Um, Star Trek Fleet Command. And, you know, it's just the way they do things. I just... I don't know. I really think that, like, Lower Decks is irreverent funny, and classic Star Trek people poo-poo on it, right? So, whatever. I watched Prodigy, 
I love amazing show. Little nitpick here and there, but you know, it just carries you. And I think that's the difference because I will stick to my guns and um really harp on how Picard just um season one of Picard was just catering bullshit. Sorry, Pat Lord Patrick Stewart, but you just tell him what the fuck to do. You're wearing a uniform, we'll tell you what the fuck to do. I know we want to get you back. But we want to have a lasting legacy of Star Trek. And then they put the fucking seven in. It's this big. It just doesn't work for me. Star Trek: Strange New Worlds works on every level, except for little things that kind of bother me. Uh, the pew pew stuff, the hand to hand fighting. By the way, the hand to hand fighting can get better, and the pew pew laser phaser things can get better also. And I don't mean better that it's bad now. It's just not me it doesn't feel like the flavor you're missing the ingredient and these are like probably minor nitpicks watch this show the captain will win you over even the lesser characters like the crew they win you over eventually you know ingenuitive ways of using old themes and you know talents that people had like they tried to use her in the old one for her singing and she do so and they, they play it well and they put it into the storyline which really just um was done well i mean amazing so uh good in and out storylines good through line throughout the season i think they went too far with it in keeping this pike's fate thing too much i i think it's a diminishing returns and then they end the season with a cliffhanger sort of you know in in a, in a sense you know, they're keeping a secret on the ship about their number one, the, f- the second command. And it's revealed in an early episode. And then in, towards the middle, Pike says, I'll back her up and stand up for her. And then it just goes nowhere, disappears, and then it comes back to bite you in the eye. Yeah, we got you. And he's not going to take it lying down, the Captain. He's going to stick up for his number. But they don't get there because. It ends. And it's right off the... Right... Right off the... Right after... Seconds after... An epi- the episode... Because it's the last episode... Where it ends with him seeing his fate... Knowing what he has to do... He can't change the future... And it, it hits home like... You know... You could do this as a one season... And you're done. Like... You can see that maybe the creators... This was their season they prom- they put out there and said... Well, we can end this at the end and maybe even come back and do a two-hour thing and wrap it up. I, I could see that, but, uh, you know, I think it was a mistake keeping this Pike future where he can't get out of it. And then I think in the uh, last episode, which is the future you can't change type episode, because uh, it, it starts off where he's sending letters to the people he knows he's going to save. And he's like, you know what? Don't show up. Uh, to that effect, don't go here. And in doing that, he doesn't have to sacrifice his life. Well, you know, well, he he can get out of his fate by not having to save anybody, so he won't force his hand, and it changes the future. So his future self comes back. Da da da. So it's, it's, when that episode ends, the last one of the season, you're put right into the his number one is taken away because she broke Starfleet regulation because she's an augment Illyrian. And you're like, what? Okay, you know, all right. In any case, you go somewhere in these shows and you love them so much, you just want to be honest about what things don't resonate with you well. And I'll be clear, Star Trek Strange New Worlds is an excellent show. It's got all the markings. It got just a good blend of nostalgia with the newness, characters that you don't even fucking know you were going to like and fall in love with. And that's the marking of a good show. Quality writing gets you in and out. You can maintain a solid storyline underneath, through line that, you know, resonates and impacts everything and characters' growth in the show. You know, who the fuck wants to see O'Hara go through her shit, right? Well, you know what? You do. It's, when it's done well, who knows when uh, Chekhov will show up and, uh, you know, like, what? it's just, you know it's coming here and there, but, you know, sometimes you roll your eyes with these type of shows when they try to, you know, impact 
these type of things. It doesn't work in the long run, right? It just doesn't um, feel earned in a lot of shows. And this show is really doing it well. Again, the atmosphere, the sh- cinematography, they film it. It pays homage and nostalgia to the old stuff. So you get that feeling. You do feel like uh, William Shatner is going to come around the corner of the set and you're gonna, it's going to blend right in. It reminds me of the Deep Space Nine classic um, triples episode where they go back in time and they, they cut in. It was just fucking amazing, by the way. Can we say how amazing Deep Space Nine was? And their, their, you know, ingenuitive, genius way of going, let's go back in time and stuff, do a time thing with triples and let's cut us in with the original cast. Fucking awesome. How everybody's awestruck and, you know, they want to see Kirk and this is amazing. Just whatever. Just, yeah, I can watch that. I love watching those seasons, uh, those shows, D Space Nine, Voyager. Anyway. Star Trek Strange New Worlds, it's a total recommendation. I bet you'd like it even if you don't know Star Trek. It just got that feel. It's a good quality show. And I, I say it a lot of times throughout the years with my friends who, you know, we into these things and watch shows. You can do things I don't agree with, but do them well. Like, I can't really criticize something that's done really well. It's just not what I wanted. And you know, the older I get, the more I realize uh, that distinction between it, like, that argument you have with people, like, oh, you know, like, for instance, I don't like the Godfather movies. I give no fucks about them. I'm not going to go around saying they suck, right? But I don't, I'm not in the mood. And I, I had another thing, my friend, we come over, he comes over and we, like, tell each other what shows we're watching and what's good, <clears throat> and I put them on a list. So, for instance, I have no interest in watching the new Top Gun Maverick movie. I give no fucks how good it is. But when I'm in the mood and it strikes me, it's on my list. Like I do recommend, I do take recommendations and understand quality stuff. And it's not for me at this moment, my mindset, whatever. You know, not that it's bad. I just don't want to watch, uh, you know, for instance, like, um, you know, uh, the Godfather movies or um, Sopranos, which I never fucking watch. Like I, I don't want to see real life, the shit that I know. Like, I know people like this. This is Brooklyn, New York. And fucking Italian mob wannabe bullshit nonsense. And it's just... But it, it, I bet it's fucking amazing. Done amazing. And this is the point I'm getting to before I end this thing. This is a Star Trek made for me. It seems like a response to the negative comments they were getting about Discovery and Picard, perhaps. Because I've said this before on one of my podcasts. Discovery did not save Star Trek. Did not keep it back in the people's mind. The new movies with um, those actors and stuff were uh, what it maintained it for now. But let's be honest. It was Star Trek Lower Decks. When it came out, it's irreverent humor. It's animation. That propped up and maintained Discovery. I, I just know. I, 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 this is what I believe. I'm convinced. Because there's just no way that you could see where it was going. It was almost like um, Discovery was hiding their numbers and how many people were watching it because they put so much money into this fucking show. And granted, like I said, it's not my Star Trek. It's fucking amazing, some of the shit they do in that show. I will still say go fuck yourself with the stupid my fucking warp they do. You could have it do what it does and not make it look like a fucking toy that spins around and rotates. It's fucking dumb. All right, whatever. <clears throat> this show sticks to the classic uh, warp trail thing and going to warp. I'm going to really prop this up towards the end because I nitpick a lot and I these things like they make me roll my eyes, the pew pews and the hand thing. It's just minor things. But you don't have to be a Star Trek fan to like this. I just And that is an achievement in itself. An achievement. This is quality writing for the people who are in it. It almost feels like when they put the actors in, they went back and rewrote things to make things feel better. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when I watch promos and stuff, I was not fucking interested in the woman they chose to be like the pilot, (laughs) you know, who flies the ship. And guess what? She's one of my fucking favorite. What is it? Ortegas? 
I think. And it, this is little things like, um, oh, you're going to put a descendant of, like, Khan? Okay, yeah. No, fuck off. You know what? She's fucking great. The new nurse chaplain, like, y you could tell these people's uh, talents were honed in on. Right, where you got this cash, you picked them for a reason, and you were able to get to the core. Because, I mean, this is what they do, right? This is what hackers love to do, and this is their world. You know, you go and make believe, you're in Star Trek world, you gotta save fucking techno babble and nerd out, right? You got these people, and you, 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 you really got them to, you know, immerse themselves and make it believable accents like things that just would throw you off work they just cater to these people and who they are you got a great character hammer i think it is and his arc is like pretty surprising where it goes and it just lays a foundation of what makes star trek great and i think they were smart i think they were really smart doing this you know i know there's a point where nostalgia might be too much and you know look I watched that Twin Peaks fucking The Return. Fucking Twin Peaks fanatic in that sense. Uh, not as much as you know, most of the content that I watch from it, but in that sense, um, it could have used some more fucking nostalgia. Okay? That fucking return, that 18 hours of, you know, we're not going to give you this. And it's just, no. It serves a purpose. It's there for a reason. It works for a reason. So. Strange New Worlds, Star Trek done for me in that sense, and I'm applauding it. It's achievement from the actors, from the music. Even when they do a silly uh, Spock dreams about his two half fighting, Spock is a half Vulcan, half human hybrid. Well, they did a fucking funny throwback to the uh, fight between him and Kirk with the music. It just really makes you smile and they don't overuse it and then like abuse it and make you want to fucking regret you've ever heard the fucking thing so great i just gotta give this show the love that it deserves and yes i'll nitpick the pew pew and you know i get better at your hand-to-hand -hand combat um you know you got some such great shows on now that do it so well i would bet discovery is better at it I'm not going to put it in the car because I, my memory is telling me it has some real choppy, half crazy edits and stuff. And yeah, go back and watch the original Star Trek and you're like, okay, who's that? That's not Kirk fighting. And the camera pans around and you see it's William Shatner. And you pan around like, no, that's not Kirk. You know, it's just, it's so blatantly bad. Me and my friend watched like the A-Team. We had to watch all fucking seasons again. And they do this thing where... Um, uh, I think it's in the opening scene where the, there's an enemy jeep blows up and it rises into the air like 15 feet and smashes back to the ground. And you can clearly see there are blow-up dummies dressed as army people in it. And we, oh, I'm okay. And then they cut back. Everybody's getting out of the car, dizzy. Like, it's just ridiculous what we did. And watch those things in, like, high definition now. You'll flip out, like, how fucking ridiculous it could be. Anyway, Star Trek Strange New Worlds got my nerd on this is for me it resonates with me it sticks with me i care about these characters and the ones i didn't even fucking think i would like because on the trailer didn't look good for me or i try to you know that's the problem too when you don't want to go too deep but you want to see it right like how much are you going to look into this uh new show and learn about it before it comes out me i try to avoid it but when i see things and that's how a human brain works so kudos everybody aurora ortegas uh, laan uh, chaplain, the nurse, uh, and Benga, the doctor. Oh, all right. So let's get. All right, I, I, I gotta say this, okay? Because I was going there, and then the greatness of the show just distracted me. As towards the end, when I talked about the thing with Pike getting elevating, they did something that really pulled me out of the show more than the pew pew uh, laser thing, and it was the fact that. I was surprised that they did the let's dress up as a fictional world type thing. Now, this was done to the nth degree with Next Generation. And it went from there. Uh, Deep Space Nine avoided this for the most part. But the holodecks became great tools 
for insane adventures and you could have uh sherlock holmes storylines that date is going through and picard's uh, noir um detective uh, holograms and they were fucking amazing and sometimes they get a little too crazy you know and but it was there and it it almost became you know a handicap to kind of go to it and it really threw me off the way they decided to do it in this show but we've done well just whatever but they do something that really it was a, it pissed me off but this is something that pissed me off not just pulled me out okay so spoilers the doctor on the show mbanga is hiding a secret that's revealed pretty soon in the show so here's the deal the ship they get into a predicament and at the end of the episode number one comes in and goes look this happened because you're doing something and he goes okay he gives it up he says oh he's got his daughter stored in the transporter banks meaning when you transport somebody you keep them in the buffer right so you're standing here and i tra teleport you or transport you to the planet down below we change your molecules into energy we 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 we, we constitute you back on the planet well he puts her into the thing and never re puts her back out except for certain times he reads a book to her and it's pretty good so you've got this true storyline that they're using about the doctor and his daughter, who's got an uncurable disease in the Star Trek universe, which is fine. And he can only bring her out for short times because the more she stays in, constituted in real life, it, it progresses the disease. Fine. Done well. I loved it. Excellent. Because I wasn't even that too into the doctor at first. And they decide to hand wave this fucking plot line away. And it pissed me off. It actually made me angry. And what I mean by that is they do this fucking episode where everybody's dressed up from a story because he reads a book to his kid every day. And the kid makes an illusion that, oh, you know what, I would make a different ending. He's like, well, you get older. And, you know, it's all because, you know, she keeps going back into the transporter buffer. She keeps becoming energy patterns stored in the computer. And he brings her out and... Because of the things that were going on in the show, really good episodes, he's got a little more, he's doing tests, like, he's got a little bit of help on maybe how to cure her or help her situation. And they hand-waved a fucking thing away with a magical fucking space creature. And it takes over the ship, and it's got everybody in this fantasy world where everybody's got to dress up as kings. And I'm sorry, it didn't fucking work. There's a reason why the holodecks were important and learning tools and uh, uh, vehicles to take your episodes into really strange new worlds and to make them unique. And, you know, it's, but it becomes a handicap when you go to it too much. And Star Trek did a great thing that was kind of carried on uh, Next Generation that it carried over where, hey, you know what? We're doing a Sherlock Holmes hologram and everybody's having fun. But the AI Moriarty become sentient and it's carried over and not in this show right here but you know you didn't have that here you had an entity in a nebula who's able to convince people they're in this fantasy world and everybody gets to dress up and do their thing and i didn't fucking like it i didn't like it and at the end it's like oh you know what dad let me go with them oh now this had a callback Maybe it's done on purpose to the original series, Pike. So I'm going to give some more spoilers away before I wrap this up. In the original show, when they pushed Star Trek to be a pilot, it was not William Shatner. It was Captain Pike. Spock was there. That's what this is kind of based on. Now, when that died out, Star Trek came back with William Shatner. They had an episode where they pieced together the pilot, and you show that Spock is disobeying Starfleet orders because of his respect for Captain Pike, and he brings him back to a planet, and this is all has to do with the episode, where they will make him be convinced he's normal again. Because he has an act. Okay, here's the thing about Pike. He has an accident when he saves people, and he gets blown up with radiation, and he has no legs. He's in a fucking floating hover wheelchair, and his face is melted. 
All right? It's fucking gruesome. It's done insanely well, even the original series to now. And uh, so what Spock does in the episode with William Shatner is he hijacks the ship and he's being court-martialed and he won't tell them why. But when they get to the destination, he sends Pike down to the planet and then Pike waves him because he can walk again. He's normal. Because the people on the planet, those big fucking guys with their big heads, like they look like fucking dumplings, those fucking characters um, are able to project an illusion and Pike's able to live out his life as a normal human with a gorgeous woman he loves to an extent, right? So Spock sacrifices respect in his tenure at Starfleet to give his captain who he respected and loved, uh, you know, uh, the rest of his life can be lived out normal. So, and we'll get into this before I end it. This fucking daughter of the uh, doctor who has this uncurable disease, the episode, I was intrigued by it, where it was going to go, how we're going to blend this, and, you know, you meet new worlds and get new tech. No. The fucking Nebula fairy comes, puts him in a storybook fucking thing. Let's play dress up. Let's do the classic Star Trek, you know, holodeck type episode, but do it ingenuity, do it, give it a twist. And then have the fucking daughter just go with them and it's over. And then she comes back real quick in, in the same episode older. And he's like, oh, you look at your mom. And, and then I, I didn't fucking buy it. I don't fucking buy it. And then boom, it's just done. Done. I thought it was cheap, lazy way to, the, the show, like I said, the episode was done probably great. People are going to love it. Whatever. And then granted the storyline went watching people dress up as medieval people is something that I actually think is cool, but um, you don't get to hand wave the daughter. That was a great storyline. It was a great um, growth of the Doctor character who I didn't like in the beginning. And this is hand waved away. Now, it might come back. Maybe she'll fucking save them at some point. And you'll have a great actress on the show. Like, I don't know. But you had this young girl, you know, 11 years old, who keeps coming out of the transporter uh, patterns, and she's slain in the chair, and he reads a book to her, and the developing storylines around where he was going, what the episode was about, where he could get maybe a cure. And it was interesting, and it was this bond they had between him and number one, Rebecca Romaine, who realizes it, and he's like, okay, I'll turn myself over. And she's like, no, I'll dedicate power to it. I want to meet her one day. It's just like, it just gives a hand waved away. So that's really it. So, there you go. Nitpicks and something I really got angry about. All wrapped up in this wonderful podcast. So, I think this is where I'll end it. Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I love the show. Amazing talent. All brought together. Again, a rare thing. Actors, chemistry, uh, quality storylines and storytelling, writing, cinematography, camera angles. Blending movie, do you know what we could do with technology now? Having the ships move, and you're like, wow, this is cool. Rather than just you know stationary phases shooting over, like it's there and it's charming and it's lovable and it's just what I needed in my Star Trek. So I recommend the show. Go watch Star Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Kudos. Uh, I'm really, I'm really excited for what's coming, and. On that, I'll talk to everybody next time. Take care.